Hello, I'm Marsha Molina, and in honor of Black History Month, we are going back to take a look on one of the black leaders that pioneered pr our progression. It isn't talked about nearly enough, as he should be, Robert Smalls. Robert Smalls was born a slave in 1839 to a local planter in Viewford, South Carolina. In 1856, Smalls married Hannah Jones, an enslaved hotel maid. After having two children together, Smalls was determined to buy freedom for his new family, which he eventually did. When the Civil War broke out, Smalls was assigned to Confederate cargo ships. Over the course of several months, Smalls learned that all, he, all he could about navigating the ship and waiting for an opportunity to escape. In 1862, while the white crew and officers were sleeping, Smalls, his wife, and their two children quietly slipped, slipped the planter out of Charleston Harbor. Smalls successfully navigated through the sh ship through five checkpoints and then headed out to open waters in the Union blockade. The story of the courageous escape of Smalls became a national phenomenon, and it was one of the factors encouraging President Abraham Lincoln to authorize the f free African Americans to serve in the Union military. In 1868, he served as a delegate to the South Carolina State Convention that wrote a new state constitution. That same year, he was elected to the State House of Representatives and was elected to the State Senate in 1872. He eventually served five terms in the House of Representatives between 1875 and 1887. Hello, I'm Marshall Molina, and I'm here with... Mr. Sakala. Hello, so I believe that you know some history about Robert Smalls, who is our subject of today's video. I, I know a little bit. A little bit. Okay, so could you tell us what you do know about him? Um, so I know he was, he was a slave um, who then I believe ended up uh, commandeering a, a ship as a privateer during the Civil War, um, in which then he, he kind of made a name for himself, became sort of a folk hero um, in African-American circles, and then I believe eventually ended up getting himself elected to the House of Representatives. Do you think that like enough people know about Robert Smalls and other like amazing like black historical leaders in history like him? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I, and I think the the first time that I had heard his story, um, my kind of reaction to it was like that's the the kind of like the perfect script for a movie, and I'm surprised they haven't made a movie about it yet. Um, but I think that yeah, that's that's one of those stories amongst many that we don't talk enough about. Um, you know, and I think it's something that our, our history curriculum has tried to address recently um, and something that we've definitely tried to address in, in our history class as well, making sure that um, more African-American voices have been better represented in the last couple of years. Hello, I'm Marshall Molina, and I'm here with... Mr. Burnich. Okay, so I know probably from asking that you do not know much about Robert Smalls, is that right? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I don't, I don't know the name well. Okay. Well, Robert Smalls was an enslaved African American um, during Civil War times, who escaped to control of a Confederate ship, and with his family, escaped and went on to have a political career, a strong political career. Um, he was a delegate of House's representatives, and he was also a member a member of the State Senate. So, do you think that as a black man of that time? Do you consider how significant it was for him to have such an amazing political career and profound in comparison to the treatment of African Americans at that time? And what do you think about that? Oh yeah, I mean, of course, uh, y y how to start, right? First, an escaped slave who not only um, is able to escape, which is you know against the odds, but then take over a ship, I mean, that's fantastic, and get his family out. Um, that type of thing, I mean, that's, that's the type of story that you know, Hollywood is probably looking for the movie rights for. Um, but then to come back to, you said South Carolina, correct? Yes. Um, to then have a political career after the war, which granted you still had the U.S. Army kind of occupying and enforcing um, the 13th and 14th Amendments by that time, and probably 15th, I'd have to check the dates, um, that allowed um, former slaves to have political careers. Um, I mean, it's amazing that, it, it, you know, it created an equality that especially in the South was unheard of at that point. Um, so for someone to do that uh, is pretty amazing. I, I mean, his story must be, you know, one of these great stories that you hear of, you know, like a Frederick Douglass level um, heroism, let's just say. Um, knowing that you didn't know about this story beforehand, do you think that 
the fact that this story wasn't talked about and other stories similar to it weren't talked about, although there are cases like Frederick Douglass and their stories being published and taught in schools, do you think that we should start re-educating and bringing back these stories and informative history about black Af African-American successes? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, there, there are probably a million stories out there that we just don't know. Um, ordinary people who survived slavery, <clears throat> escaped, or, you know, whatever their circumstances were that, um, you know, haven't been written down just because they didn't write it down or they moved on. Um, I think these are the type of stories that, if we have access to them, um, are great African-American stories and, frankly, are great American stories of how ordinary people can take on extraordinary circumstances, which frankly is a lesson for all of us even today, regardless of circumstance and color and things like that. Um, so yeah, these stories, when found, and I'm sure there are plenty that are lost, right? Just because memory is and somebody didn't write it down and it's gone. Um, when you find stories like this, um, they should be celebrated um, wherever they can, regardless of the month or the, you know, what we say is when we're going to do these things. If it's a good story, it's a good story. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So I'm here with Makai Crum. Generally, what do you have to say about this story, and how does this story, is like well knownness and just general significance in African American history, how do you think that affects our knowledge and our education system? Uh, I feel like a lot of my people's advances have been sort of pushed away and kept away, just just in sort of light to kind of kind of discredit not not saying now now times they openly try to discredit but I feel as though like there's many stories that show how how talented and how and how uh, how how many heroes that we breed not not only African Americans but just people in general so I feel like I feel like a story like this coming out it's good for not only African Americans but it's good for everybody to show that even when times are going against you, you could still rebel against them and come up on top. Do you have any comments or maybe figures that you'd like to share with us today? Um, like in honor of Black History Month, or is there any like Black or African American people that are significant in your life? Uh, for me, this person's like this person's not famous, but my grandmother is somebody who has put me in a position to 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 be to be uh prideful in the way I am and who I am and and my and my origins and growing up my grandma always made me learn about where I come from and what my people have done so I feel as though like for young black kids we just need people in our households to keep reminding us that we are kings and queens and that no matter how much they try to hold us down, we're still going to prevail. So as a young black man in the 21st century, how do you think this story pertains to and is significant to you? Uh, I feel like it's significant to me, but not only every other young black man, because it shows how, it shows how life is what you make it. I mean, for a man like Robert Smalls coming, in, coming into life as a slave and, and having people try to bring him down constantly for years and years, I feel as though his, his mindset to be strong enough and to do this and to free his family from captivity and slavery, I feel like, I feel like it's just, it's groundbreaking. And I feel like not only, not only are we seeing him, him later on become a delegate in the House of Representatives, but we also see, we also see him become more of a, more of a legend for black people. There's always somebody who is going to who's going to step up, and there's always somebody who's going to who's going to try to help people. It's just important because now we're we're starting to see more more black people hold jobs in office now, and more black people hold jobs in Senate. I feel like the reason why they don't talk about it much is because this man did what none of them thought that they could he could do or any of us could do. So I feel like, I feel like this story is very important 